Mount Kilimanjaro is taller than Everest in three very distinct ways. Number one, Mount Kilimanjaro is the tallest peak in Africa, but it's also the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. What does that mean? Well, it means that it is not part of a mountain range. It is its own thing. Everest is part of the Himalayas. It's part of a mountain range, not a singular mountain. And if that isn't good enough, try fact number two. If you measure from the center of the earth, the very core of the earth, and you measure to the very tip top of Mount Kilimanjaro, you will find that that distance is further than the distance from the center of the earth to the top of Mount Everest. How is that possible? Well, our world isn't a sphere. I mean, it's still round, okay? But it bulges out around the equator. And Mount Kilimanjaro is much closer to the equator than Mount Everest. And because of that bulge, that makes the very top of Kilimanjaro further from the center of the earth than the top of Mount Everest. That means the effect of gravity is less if you're on top of Mount Kilimanjaro than it is if you're on top of Mount Everest because you are simply further away from the center of the earth. So you will actually be lighter because there is less gravity on you at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro than you would at the top of Mount Everest. Now we're talking about like 0.4% difference in your body weight, but still that's pretty damn amazing. Oof, I know for a fact that one hurt the flat earthers. Okay, fact number three, from base camp of Everest to the summit, is a shorter distance than from base camp of Kilimanjaro to the summit of Kilimanjaro. The distance between the base camp and the summit is simply more on Kilimanjaro. I mean, granted, you are starting a lot lower, but it's crazy to think that the actual route you have to climb is more than on Everest. Now, what do these three facts mean? Well, they kind of mean nothing because Everest is still the tallest mountain in the world when you measure from sea level, which is how we measure everything. Everest is massive, 8,848 meters. Holy crap. Whereas Mount Kilimanjaro, when measured from sea level, is 5,895 meters. That is a significant difference of almost 3,000 meters. Three kilometers straight up, yes. Mount Everest is massive. But if you want to have some fun with people and throw out some technically accurate facts, there's an argument to say that Mount Kilimanjaro is taller. Now, why do I bring this up, you might ask, and why am I dressed in such an awesome getup? It's because I just got back from Mount Kilimanjaro, and I'm here to say that unlike Everest, Mount Kilimanjaro is accessible to everybody. Stick around for a wild personal story. Mount Kilimanjaro is one of the seven summits. That's the tallest peak on each continent. So it is Africa's tallest mountain and it's located in Tanzania. How did I come to climb Mount Kilimanjaro? Well, I was on my podcast with my friend Nelson Dellis. He's the five time USA memory champion. He mentions that he's been up Everest four times. What? I thought he was the memory champ. And next thing I know, I find out he's a crazy mountaineer guy. The picture behind your head is probably something you took, oh, yeah? Yes, this one. Yeah, sorry, I got the light shining. But this is uh, That's Everest. K2. It's Everest. Everest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was just shot in the dark. I don't know. Close, close. Uh, these are some of the, the excursions I like to do is uh, climb. I just one of these. <laughs> Just casually go to the tallest place on earth. Well, yeah, listen, it's probably, you know, it shouldn't be too surprising. I love it, dude. It's, it's another thing that makes me feel a bit more superhuman when I can push yeah. the body mm. uh, up something that where it shouldn't be, you know? Next thing you know, Kristen and I are standing at the base of Kilimanjaro with Nelson and four other people about to embark on a crazy adventure. All right, everybody, uh, this is Nelson. He's the reason I'm here. Hi. Sorry. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, let me let me start this. Let me restart this. You can confidently squeeze into this. I feel like. Yeah. 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 I block none of him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly none. He casually mentioned that he takes people up Kilimanjaro. I said I'll go, and then uh, neither one of us really believed it at the time. But here I am. He actually did it, and he's yeah. still here. How am I doing so far? Great. There were seven of us in our team. The ones you know already: me, Kristen, Nelson. There's also Kobe, Monica, Frederick, and Kevin. I didn't know these people, but they would soon become super good friends because that's what happens when you spend an entire week doing something very difficult. You become instant friends. But our entire team is made up of 31 more people. You heard me correctly. It took 31 additional people to get seven of us up to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. I bet many of you were not expecting a number quite so high. I know I wasn't. When you see the sheer volume of gear, it is absolutely incredible. These porters 
are not only carrying their gear, they're carrying all of our gear. Clothes, sleeping bags, tents, tables, and chairs, and food, and supplies, and absolutely everything. And I am struggling just to pull my own body weight up this mountain. Now before we get too far into this, I want you to understand that there are several different routes up Mount Kilimanjaro, and they all have varying degrees of difficulty. So the two most common ones are fondly known as the Coca-Cola route and the whiskey route. The Coca-Cola route is the most gradual route. It is definitely the easiest way. No matter which way you go, you're going up almost 20,000 feet. Still not to say that it's easy because you have to deal with altitude, but the terrain of the Coca-Cola route is a much more gradual way. And if you can hike long distances and you can sleep in a tent and you don't mind being cold, you can do Kilimanjaro. But Watch out for that altitude, we'll get to that later. The more difficult route is known as the whiskey route, the Machame route, and that's the route we took. But our team decided to get a little bit more crazy, and I'll explain that very shortly. Every route starts the same way. You are spending the first day hiking through jungle. Almost done the day one. Just go to the camp. Then as time goes on, you're trading those trees for shrubs and jungle for rocks. And if you're lucky, you might have some views. We were socked in by mist. You can experience absolutely every different possible terrain on your journey up a mountain like Kilimanjaro. No view today. No view. It's opened up, it's sunny, we're above the clouds. That's the top over there, but that is days away. Now the common wisdom is to hike high and sleep low, but we were taking a very aggressive route up Mount Kilimanjaro. I have virtually no experience at hiking at elevation. I was amazed at the effects it has on the human body. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. How's today, Kristen? How are you doing? Uh, it's got its ups and downs. Yeah. 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 Okay, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is our tent. The peak. Da -da -da. Okay, friends, this is, uh, this is where we leave the boots and the other bags that we hike for the day with. And this is uh, the sleeping arrangement. Uh, honestly, it's about six trillion degrees in here right now. Hot is better than wet. Everything dries. It gets so cold at night and the colder, the higher you get. So, you know, taking, uh, taking all the extremes um, as they come. And am I losing weight? I don't know. They've been feeding us well. <laughs> These porters have been hiking up some pretty good meals. So, um, I don't know if I'm losing weight, but I'm, I'm hiking for hours a day. Hike and climb, hike and climb. So, I think I'm burning like, you know, more. <laughs> Just more, whatever that is, more. And uh, no beers, there's no bar up here. I haven't seen, haven't seen a pint in 48 hours. No Irish pub at the top of this mountain, so. That's good for, for weight loss, and not, not for, for drinking. All right. Um, bye. It's windy as fuck. The view is nice. The tower we eat blew over. Very dusty, but it's all right. It's cold and windy. I call it above the cloud. Okay, made it. Um, all the different trains we've seen now. We are above the vegetation. There is less oxygen here, higher elevation. We are both feeling the elevation a little bit. We're well and truly above the clouds. We are above every single peak in the continental United States, except maybe Alaska. We did not check, right? Right. Yeah. 
We are right, we are right fucking there. We're still two more days to summit, maybe two more days, maybe one for three. sure. One, two, maybe three. Wah! It's getting there. Are you happy? So happy. This is amazing. Did you survive on Oreos today? I sure did. Oreos and waffles. That's Nelson in the bright color there. Um, but this is Nelson's bag. Nelson left his bag unattended. Oh, I'm giggling to myself. So maybe we can get this in here. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, he's still over there. He's a big, strong guy. He can handle it. So I was just about to pick up my bag and uh, it's uh, quite heavier than usual. Oh, what do we know? Fucker little Wes put a massive rock in my back. What a dick. <laughs> so we stayed on the traditional Machame route until we got to Lava Tower. Now, most people on this route get to Lava Tower, they have lunch, and then they hike back down to where they're going to camp that night. We decided not to do that. We have left the amateurs behind. It's only us now. We have to camp to ourselves. As soon as lunch was over and all the other groups cleared out from Lava Tower, we were alone. And that would be the last people we would see for the next two and a half days because nobody was doing the route we were going to do. You're on the top of the Lava Tower? On the top of the world, pretty much, almost. Do you have a bigger Lava Tower to get to the top two? <laughs> it's morning of day four. Uh, it's morning of day four. I uh, woke up with a pretty wicked headache today. That's the altitude. Um, everyone else was reporting headaches last night, like slight ones. I didn't have anything, but this morning I got one. Good. Uh, it's really high. It's over 15,000 feet. 4,600 meters. It's beautiful. There's no one else here. No one else is doing this route. A lot of the people, they stopped here yesterday for lunch, then they carried on down, and you kind of go around straight up that way. Um, it's incredibly cool having the mountain to ourselves, but oof. Do not feel good. <laughs> it's almost like we're not supposed to be up this high. <laughs> There is a route called the Western Breach. Now, it's not listed on many maps. It's definitely not on any of the signs, but it is a real route. It's just uncommon more difficult, and quite frankly, kind of dangerous. There are hundreds and hundreds of groups that attempt to summit Kilimanjaro every single year. And out of all of these hundreds and hundreds of groups, only six will attempt the Western Breach. What makes the Western Breach so difficult? Well, there is a lot of rock fall. These rocks are held on by ice. If you're going to climb the Western Breach, it is an 800 meter vertical climb over the lip of the crater, and you have to leave in the middle of the night. There's even a sign saying anyone attempting this must leave before 5.30 a.m. We had to get up at three in the morning, and for the first two and a half hours, we were hiking with nothing but our headlamps. The reason you have to leave so early is because you have to climb all the way up to the top of the crater before noon because when the sun comes up, the wall is still entirely in the shadow. After noon, the sun begins to heat the wall and melt the ice, and that's when the rocks fall. Now, if you don't leave early enough and you don't get to the top by noon, it's an extremely dangerous situation. In 2015 and in 2019, people have died trying the Western Breach. And we also found out the day after we summited Kilimanjaro, another group was trying to climb the Western Breach and somebody actually died that day too. Okay, a little inside the tent vlog here. I'm not sure if I'll use this footage, but at least I have it. Welcome to inside the tent. Uh, so many things have gone on today. We are sleeping at 4,900 meters. I'll do the math. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. It's gotta be, it's gotta be 15,000 feet at least. Um, it's crazy because you look out and it's just clouds. 
it feels like you're on a different planet. Like just look at the landscape. It feels like you're on Mars or something. Absolutely insane. The altitude, everyone's feeling it. So tomorrow, I think 800 meters vertical we have to do because we're gonna go up over the lip of this crater. We're gonna sleep tomorrow night inside the crater of this volcano. And then the next day, I think we'll summit the actual peak peak. If we're feeling really good tomorrow, maybe we'll summit, I don't know. But either way, we gotta get up at like three in the morning um, and do the first two and a half hours of this in the dark. It's definitely the more technical, uh, strenuous part of this climb. And you have to do it in the dark because of rock fall. I don't fully understand it. All I know is I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be climbing some steep stuff uh, at four in the morning with a headlamp and a helmet on. So we'll find out more tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else has gone on. Oh yeah, we keep <laughs> getting on more and more of a slant. Our tent every night <laughs> is slanting more and more. It's just the way the terrain is. There's no flat spots. So our tent here, like we resorted to putting our, our bags under to try and level out. If you don't do that, you end up just sliding in your sleeping bag <laughs> all night. And it's, you basically feel like you're standing uh, on the bottom of your tent. It's really weird. It, even when we eat, we eat on a slant, we sleep on a slant. We hike on a slant, it's uh, <laughs> it's what we signed up for. I'm dirtier than I've ever been uh, for longer. Maybe not dirtier, but the most prolonged dirtiness, I'd say. But it's, uh, it's all worth it, just trying to get to the top. All right, see you tomorrow. The altitude is absolutely intense. I just came up all this. A little break. The altitude marker. Another, uh, I don't know, 2,000 feet or 600 meters or so to get over the lip of the crater. How you feeling? Super good. Thanks, Sun's man. coming up. Are we about to go over a rock wall and there might be rocks? I heard them falling all night, so yes. Great. Well, we're all fuck off uh, crazy tired, but I'm not gonna stop filming things. Here's everybody. Here's my Snickers bar. Here's the slope. I don't know. Up, up, and away. Not a lot of filming has been going on because it's been very, very difficult. We're getting there though. Oh, we're so fucking close. Still a bit more to go. Nelson, do you have anything to report for people at home? No. No, great, yep. Frederick, anything? No. All right, almost there, Kristen. Nothing. Perfect. Okay. I peed on a cliff. <laughs> Being at 18,000 feet or whatever the fuck we are. We're almost at the lip of the crater. This is where we just came up. You can see the porters following us. Absolutely incredible. Most of our team is on Diamox, which helps with altitude sickness, but it's no guarantee. That morning, one of our team was vomiting and most of us had headaches. And the higher you climb, the more intense the headache becomes. But by sheer force of will and supporting each other, by 11 a.m., we climbed over the lip of that crater. Everybody, a couple more still coming up. I couldn't even film. That was the most intense day I've ever had. I couldn't even film any of the hard parts because I literally needed 
all my energy, all my hands. There's so much physical climbing. It was absolutely insane. I'm feeling very proud of myself. Very proud of Kristen. It's fucking wild. It felt like the biggest victory of all time. It could have ended right there. That could have been our summit. That's how relieved we were. When we got to the top, my buddy Kevin puked everywhere. He said it was because of altitude sickness and pure exhaustion, but I like to think that it was a victory puke. Now I tried to take as much video as I could while climbing this crater wall, but I was exhausted. And during the gnarliest parts, which was almost two straight hours, I couldn't take a single video because I was two hands gripping the rocks, trying not to fall off this damn mountain. It was a remarkable experience, but super hard to vlog. When we got to the top of the crater, we are just 200 meters from the actual summit of Kilimanjaro, but nobody has it in them. We can't do it. We decide to go to our camp. And yes, we are camping in the crater. We are going to camp inside the crater at 5,700 meters. We go into the crater where our team has already set up the camp for us. We have lunch and we decide we should try and summit this afternoon. We refuel the camp and now we are on the final push to the actual summit. And uh, again, oxygen is low, the spirits are high. Look, you're on another planet up here. Nothing lives up here, nothing. See you at the top. It's only 200 more meters, and if we were at sea level, you could do this in a matter of minutes. But because you are so high, you're moving so slowly, you look like a zombie in The Walking Dead, you're barely able to move your feet. Now everyone on our team was struggling differently, but when you get to the top, everyone's able to muster a smile because you know you've just done something incredible. We made it. From hell or high water, we fucking made it. <laughs> this is the top, we're just gonna go over to the, the sign, the official top. absolute hardest route that nearly no one takes and as they say with great risk comes great reward the harder you push the harder you sacrifice the more elated you become at the end all we wanted to do when we woke up get the hell down that mountain I do not feel good today we summited yesterday and since we got down from that, I was a wreck. The altitude is definitely stopping. No, nobody's doing that great. There's a couple people still doing pretty good. I think I just have to start going down. I need to get lower elevation very quickly. I have a copy. And then I gotta go down. I think that's what I need to do. There are so many different ways to do Kilimanjaro. This is the hardest one. I'm glad I did it. But I feel like a shell of a person right now. My head's pounding. Can't wait to edit this one, you know. <laughs> we took five days to climb that mountain and we came down in less than a day and a half. But the biggest takeaway for me is what it feels like to try and function at high altitudes. If you go to put your sleeping bag away, you're out of breath. If you go to tie your shoes, you're gasping for air. Now when you breathe in at that altitude, you feel like you're breathing in. You're filling your lungs with something but there's just not enough oxygen. Now to put it in perspective, altitude does some wild things to the human body. Your hair stops growing, your fingernails stop growing, any cuts you have don't heal. 
Sleeping at that altitude is absolutely devastating on everybody. And I can tell you minute by minute, second by second, as we went down, the pressure of that altitude headache went away until it evaporated completely. Why do I tell you this story? Well, I tell you this story because it's fun to do difficult things. No matter which route you wanna take, no matter what your fitness level is, if you can walk a long ways, if you can handle the cold, if you can sleep in a tent, and you're willing to battle that altitude, you could climb Mount Kilimanjaro. If this is at all on your bucket list, I strongly encourage you to do it. At the very least, I encourage you to visit Tanzania. It is full of amazing views and wonderful people and an experience of a lifetime. I can barely contain myself. In fact, why would I? What an experience. Yeah. <laughs> 